Hey guys, welcome to another open source options tutorial. Today we're going to cover sliding windows or moving windows in NumPy. And just to give you an idea of what that is, that's when you use basically a 3x3 three three moving window to collect a mean or a minimum or an average on a NumPy array. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. It, it, uh, it can be a little complicated, but we'll just walk through it and you'll know how to do it by the end of this lesson. Um, for code, go to my website, opensourceoptions.com and look for the vectorized moving window grid operations on NumPy arrays, and I'll include the link in the description. All right, first thing we need to import NumPy. And let me just make sure I can zoom in so you can see the code really well. Okay, so we're going to import that. And the next thing I want to do is just create a random array. So to create that array, we'll just call this array A. We're going to do np.random.rand. We're going to give it the shape of our array, and we're going to do a 7x7 seven seven array for this example. All right. So let's go ahead, and we're going to run this, and I'm going to print out A so you can see what it looks like when we run. Just go to run, run, select our script, and it's going to run. All right, so you can see down here uh, that I have that printed out. And I'm going to round this when I do it, just so that we don't we don't need that many decimals. Uh, we can just use like two or three decimals to get a good idea of what we need. So let's just round this whole thing off. We're going to do np dot round nump random comma space. We'll do decimals equal. Let's try three. Let's run that again. There you go, you can see what our initial array looks like. So I want to print this out at the beginning so we can see what how we're going to make the changes to this, okay? All right, so I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first is going to be the slow way with the loop, but it'll help conceptualize what we're doing. And then I'm going to move on and show you how the fast way to do it um, by vectorizing it, okay? So the thing we need to do with a loop is we need to loop through all of the interior elements. So by interior elements, I mean anything that's not on an edge. If we do these edge elements, we can't apply a window over those because we only have three neighbor elements. We need to have nine neighbor elements. So if I want to calculate a new value here for this 0 0.919, I could take the average of the, the eight surrounding elements and the inner element, okay? And so we're going to do that here with a loop. And so first, we're going to start by making a loop. So for i in range 1, and then we're going to go all the way up to a.shape 0 um, minus 1. So we're going to get the first row all the way to so the second row all the way to almost the last row, to one before the last. We're going to go for J in range 1, A dot shape 1. So give us the columns, minus 1. Put a space up here just to clear that out. Okay. And so that gives us that. And then we're going to want to get all of the neighboring elements. Okay. And so before we do that, though, we want to create a new array to put these values into. So we're going to make this array just be a value of all negative ones to start. So we're going to have b, which will be np.full. We're going to make it the same shape as a. And we're going to fill it with a value of negative 1.0. Okay. And so then b at our given row and column we'll make this an average. So we'll do, it's going to equal the average, which we're going to add up all nine of those grid cells, so the eight neighbors and the center cell, and then we're going to divide by nine. So we can do that. Let's give some parentheses for our additions. We're going to do A. We're going to start with the center cell, I plus J, and I'll list these out here so that it's easy to see. I, or A, then we want to offset, so if we go top left corner, will be I minus 1, 
j minus 1. And then we can do, let's keep up on the top row. So i minus 1 j will give us the top middle. And oops, what's that? We can do a i minus 1 j plus 1. That gives us the top right. And then we can do I for A. We want to do just we'll do the middle row, so I J minus one. Now we already have the center one, so now we can do I or A I J plus one. Okay, and let's come down. Oops, we need to put the square bracket. Here, then add. I lost track of my parentheses to close. Okay, and then we're going to do I, or A, sorry. We could do I plus 1. J minus 1 gives us the bottom left. Then A, I plus 1. J gives us the bottom middle. A, I plus 1, J plus 1 gives us the bottom right. And then we can divide all that by 9.0, and that will give us an average. Okay, so let's run this code. And I'm going to close this so we can see what we have going on here. So there's our, there's our loop implementation of a moving window, and this will give us an average. Okay, so let's come down, and let's print B. And we'll see B is going to be different. We should have negative ones around the outside, and then we should have averages in the middle. Let's go ahead here and click run, see what we get. So I clicked run. Okay, and let's do, I'm just going to make this so it's easy. We'll do NP dot round B decimals equals three. So let's go ahead and run this now so that we can see what B looks like there. Okay, and so you can see we have these negative ones all around the outside. Now, if we look at this first element here, which we calculated was the 0 0.871, that has now become 0 0.594, okay? And here, 0 0.58 has now become 0 0.56, okay? Cool. Let's go ahead and we can try a different function to show you how this works again. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, divide by 9. Let's just get the minimum value. So let's do np.min and uh, then we can put all these into a list instead. So let's just wrap these in square brackets and replace our plus signs with the comma. Let's come down here, do this for all of them. Okay, and after we do this with the loop, I'm going to show you how we can vectorize this so it's much faster and you can apply it on large arrays. And while I'm doing this, I'll just explain that this is the way that you're going to do a lot of raster and grid calculations, things like slope hill shade, um, flow direction, aspect, it's all done with a moving window. Okay. All right, well, let's give this a try and see if we have any errors. I don't think we do. Let's go ahead and click run. Okay. And so here you go. You can see that if we take this element right here, the lowest value should be 0 0.046. And indeed, we come down here and that's the lowest value. It should be the same for this one also and for this one because they all share that value in their neighbors. All right. So you can see how you can get the minimum value there instead of the mean value. All right. So that is how you can calculate the mean and minimum using a loop. Now, there's a faster way to do this with NumP. So I'm going to just get rid of the code we have right here. And... Um, like I said, if you want the loop code, I have it up on the website. Follow the link in the description to get to that post article with the code. Okay, now let's vectorize this.
the reason we're going to vectorize it is because it is a lot faster. And the way I'm going to vectorize it, let me just show you down here. You can see we have kind of this um, number of columns minus two, number of rows minus two section here. We're just going to move that section around. So I'm going to take everything except for the last two rows and the last two columns, add it to everything in the middle, and add it to everything except for the first two rows and first two columns, and that will give us the same result. And I'll show you that here with the code. And there are um, some description of the website, which I'll just go over and show you real quick here. Okay, so this is from the website, and I'm showing you the offsets here, and this is showing an array and how each of those is going to be offset, and we'll just add all those offsets up to get the sum, and then we can divide, or we can put them in a list and get the minimum uh, or the maximum or, or however we want to do that. All right, um, so that is how we can accomplish that. So let's go back and write the code now that will do this. Okay, so we're going to start off, and we want B. We're going to get everything except for the edge columns. Once again, so it's going to be 1, the second row to the second to last row, and the second column to the second to last column. And that is going to equal... And here's where we're just going to add things up. And if you wanted to mean, one easy way to do this is to just add these as a list and then do like np.mean. And so we'll just put these in list form so you can see what's going on. So now we can go A, we can grab everything in the middle. So 1 to negative 1 and 1 to negative 1. All right, and then we'll do comma enter. And then we can do A, and let's just start at the top left once again. Um, and so if we go top left, that means we're going to want everything except for the last two rows and everything except for the last two columns. Okay. All right. And then if we want to go top middle, that means we are going to do, uh, we're just going to shift the row. We're just going to shift the columns, but not the rows. So minus two. Now it's going to be 1 minus 1. Okay. And then if you want to shift to the top right, we're still going to keep the rows the same. And then we're going to do everything except for the first two rows. We're going to go down to the middle. And so if we're in the middle of the rows, it's going to be 1 minus 1. And then we're going to do um, everything up to the last two rows. And we already have the middle middle, so we'll skip that. And then we can go um, the middle rows and the, everything except for the first two columns. Now let's go bottom left, which to do that, we need to shift the rows down. So everything except for the first two rows. And then we want to do um, everything except the last two columns. So that's bottom left. And then bottom middle, we'll keep the rows the same. And we'll get the middle. And then the last one is going to be bottom right, which will be um, two and then two. Okay. And so if we do mean, we make this into a list. So let's make this whole thing a list. And that's going to give us the average uh, in there. And this basically is one line of code. We're just taking the mean of this array that shifts all those values. So we have to mind, we might have to mind our dimensions here. So let's just take a look and make sure this comes out the right way. Um, but we can see what happens. Let's see if it works. Okay, and we get the same value in everything. So something didn't come out quite right. And we're just going to make this a little bit simpler. Um, we're going to get rid of that. We'll just add this together to make it work. I don't want to troubleshoot that right now. And so we'll, we'll change the commas with the plus sign for each of these. Okay, and whoops, 
I'm just going to shift these over so it's easy to see what's going on. Okay, that's not going to quite line up. We'll leave it like this. You guys know what's going on there. So when I do this and I divide by 9.0, I'm going to get my mean again. So you can see here that once again, we get the mean in here of those top three, and we get that mean all the way across. Now, I, I showed you an example with the mean using the NumPy function that did not work. Uh, and the reason that didn't work is I didn't specify the axis. I need to calculate that on. You can do the same thing, and you can specify the axis to use the NumP functions. Now, let me, I'll work out an example of that right now so that you can see how that would work. Um, so we'll come in and we'll change these back. So let's go np.mean. And let's get rid of that at the end. Let's come down. Let's make this a list. We're going to need to change these plus signs back to commas. Even though I just changed them back. So we almost have this here. Okay, so we have that. And then we probably just, we just need to specify the axis this is going to be calculated on. And then it will work. And so the axis we want to calculate this on is axis zero. That just means keep things the same. Sorry, I changed that just to test to make sure I gave you the right answer. So if we keep this the same, we'll be good. If you get confused about the axis, I recommend just changing your shape so it's not symmetrical, so you can see what the output comes out like. And if you get it wrong, you'll probably get an error message, so you'll know. But in this case, to keep it the same, we're going to keep the axis zero. We have our mean. Let's go ahead and click run. All right, let's pull this up so we can see it. Okay, and you can see over here, our mean value is 0.445, which looks about right, 0.535, which is about right. Now, it's often easier to check this and see if it's doing what we want with minimum, just because we can easily see the minimum value. So I'm going to change this to min, and we'll run this again, and we'll make sure that things look right. So let's go ahead and click run. Go check this. Okay, and so our minimum here is 0 0.024. We take a look around here. 0 0.024 is the smallest. This one is also the same. Let's go take a look down at the bottom right corner, 0 0.003. We're looking sure enough that is the minimum there. Uh, we can come over to the edge here. We have 0 0.056. For this one, and you can see we have that right up there. That looks like it's a little bit off. Let's just double check this. Oh, sorry, I saw the values wrong. This is 0.082 for this one here. You can see that that is the minimum value, 0.082. All right, so that's how you can vectorize your NumPy operations. Um, and do moving windows on NumPy arrays. This is way faster. I have a graph that shows the speed difference um, in, the, in the website article. So hopefully this has helped you figure out how you can use NumPy arrays a little more efficiently to do some advanced operations. Thanks for watching.